first, I thought I'd mention a few things about American commercial lines and the industry and our business um, to outsiders uh, like I was before coming here. It's largely an unknown industry. Um, we run a manufacturing company that manufactures barges and towboats that operate on the inland waterways. And a larger portion of our business is actually shipping commodities in those barges on behalf of our customers. A little bit of the background for our technical environment before considering moving forward with uh, our AWS migration. We were recently new customers on EBS 1213. We completed an implementation in February of 2013. Uh, covering core financials, AR, AP, purchasing inventory, and an asset management module. It's a mission-critical application for us, as it is for most businesses. Uh, many of our users are at our headquarters location in Jeffersonville, Indiana, but we do have users at other facilities, and uh, we've actually sampled users on those towboats that you saw in that picture as well around the asset management application. Um, we integrate our EBS environment, and in particular its data, with various other things at ACL, including a BI environment, and uh, both of those are protected with single sign-on. Um, our project spanned two years of our initial three-year hosting engagement with a third-party host provider. So by the time we went live, we were almost ready to start shopping a new hosting solution. What made us consider Amazon for that solution was um, probably the same kinds of things that many of you are considering today. You want a platform that's flexible. You want to be able to pay as you go for your infrastructure services. Um, and perhaps, uh, like us, you want to limit your on-premises investment in a data center. Uh, they're expensive. Um, they can be somewhat inflexible. And we saw Amazon as key to improvements in all these areas. The ability, in particular, from my, my position, to grow or shrink your infrastructure footprint um, with truly a few clicks uh, is really impressive. Our environment is always changing. Um, so it was a difficult exercise in the beginning of this for us to determine uh, how large our servers needed to be, how do we need to manage our database instances, and committing to AWS uh, and, and that as a platform gave us the ability to make those choices in a uh, not permanent way or a way that could be easily changed going forward. Our journey to AWS began with sort of a recognition that we couldn't do it on our own. Um, we did have some staff competency around Amazon, uh, new to the uh, American Commercial Lines team. That was an intentional hiring choice. And we had begun dabbling a little bit with Amazon in some small ways, some Linux server environments, uh, Route 53 DNS. We had looked at S3 storage for backups and things, but really we knew the expertise required to successfully run an Oracle instance on Amazon is specialized. Um, in many ways, it mimics running Oracle internally. You are building server environments and you're configuring storage, but the way you do it in Amazon is different enough from the way you do it in an on-premises data center that we definitely recognize we wanted to go outside for an Amazon partner. Uh, what we found interesting about Apps Associates that they were both an Amazon partner and an Oracle partner. So they have expertise in both configuring Amazon infrastructure and services and monitoring it and managing it, but also in deploying Oracle solutions to those. Uh, they manage our EBS environment for us as well as the AWS platform on which it runs, and those two things together are important. Our project was laid out in probably a typical way for a project like this. You plan out a time frame. Uh, for migrating your development and your test and your production environments. Uh, we had a lot of time luxury here. Um, the hosting company we moved from was flexible with our, uh, our departure, and they supported this migration for us. That, too, was important. We set up a development environment. Once we were comfortable with the development environment, we replicated those processes to our test environment, and ultimately, when we obtained enough testing and sign-off from our business partners, we migrated our production environment over a weekend. Really, our actual operational downtime was consolidated to about a four-hour window. For us, that included uh, exporting the data, copying it over from our pa past host provider to Amazon, and getting up and running. Um, that's pretty quick. I think a lot of people probably have concerns about how do you get large volumes of data into Amazon. For us and our available downtime window, it worked uh, with no special outside step. 
uh, there are other options and perhaps they'll be addressed in, later in this seminar in the Q&A that follows. Um, over the production weekend, one of the probably trickiest pieces of this entire architecture for us to get right was the single sign-on integration. Uh, really, that's just complexity in the Oracle world, but Apps Associates supported us and we quickly uh, hammered those out within an hour of completing that migration. So we were up and ready uh, well in advance of our Monday morning workers showing up. I will say that uh, one of the major motivations anyone considers moving to the cloud is the perception of lower infrastructure costs. And in our experience, I would stand by the fact that that's been true. Um, not dramatically lower. Certainly, we're achieving a cost savings here, uh, and not insignificant either. But more importantly, um, again, the things that I mentioned earlier in the call, I think, really drive home the flexibility of AWS. You pay for the services as you need them. You can choose whether or not to long-term commit. Um, and that flexibility combined with the overall lower infrastructure costs, I think it's just very hard to achieve in any form of an on-premises data center. Um, Post-project observations, I, I'd also say one of the things I like about AWS is the costs are very easily tracked on AWS invoices. Um, if you're in any kind of environment in which IT services are charged back, the AWS billing structure really provides uh, an easy path to be able to charge back services. On premises, it can be difficult to come up with numbers for what does a virtualization farm cost, what does your storage cost. Um, but the AWS invoicing can really support uh, chargebacks like that should you have them. Um, the uptime, uh, we have had no issues. Um, in fact, just that connectivity is very similar to the reliability we got from our dedicated hosting provider before, and frankly, similar to what we see in a, in a non-premises system when, you know, when we've had those for Oracle environments or other environments and still do. Um, there have not been any unique to AWS instances where we've had downtime. So that's been really nice. Um, over the course of the project and, and having lived, lived with it now for a year and a half, some of the other things that have been interesting, uh, the AWS model, Theru touched on a little bit of these features around disaster recovery, your backup and recovery options are just different. Um, so it's an opportunity to kind of reassess what you're doing for disaster recovery with your EBS environments. Uh, because of the nature of just the flexibility and the rapidity with which you can stand up AWS instances. Um, it, it gives you opportunity to do things differently should you choose to uh, select a different path. Um, one other thing to mentioned regarding our project execution, it, we did spend about three months going from building the dev environment to rolling out production. Uh, certainly, it could be done faster. One of the things that, that made that a three-month project for us is that we were also applying um, a fairly large number of patches to our environment. So in addition to the migration, we had significant patching going on at the time. So our testing cycle, really, it was longer because of the patching cycle. The infrastructure changes only can be executed really quickly. Um, one other thing to keep in mind as you move uh, more of your business services over to cloud-based environments, that connection path to Amazon. Um, you learned early, earlier in the call from Abdul the kinds of options that you have with just the virtual private cloud connectivity or a direct path connection to Amazon. We are still just using a VPC setup. We are evaluating direct path options, direct connect options. Um, but uh, fundamentally, as you consume more bandwidth, you'll maybe want to reassess the incoming pipes you have into your facility and your own on-premises data, data center and network. Um, we have not seen any issues there, but again, we do keep an eye on it. Future plans, um, we are happy with the AWS and, and the Apps Associates management of our instances. So as we look to the future, um, some other EBS-specific things we'll consider, our identity management, uh, Oracle Access Manager infrastructure lives on premises for us. There are some architectural reasons and even just a staffing and support reason that we will likely move that environment over to uh, AWS and uh, Apps Associates will help us do that. Um, for now, today at ACL, we keep our BI uh, services internal. They're in our data center. They include much more than just the data coming from EBS. Uh, so right now, I don't see us moving that, but in the future, when 
data is coming from other sources outside of our data center today, it's likely that you know, our Oracle BI solution would be a good candidate to move to AWS as well. Um, and, and fundamentally, I just I just don't necessarily see a time when AWS would be or ACL would be investing heavily in hardware resources for our on-premises data center. Um, AWS is always probably going to be top of the list or first consideration for can we do it there. Uh, that kind of goes back to how this call was kicked off. More organizations are asking what can't I move to the cloud instead of what can I move to the cloud. I'd say we're definitely in that boat. Um, I find Amazon Workspace is very interesting. We've had several calls with Amazon about that. We've been trying them out. We have some use cases for which Workspaces would, uh, I think, support us very well. Um, and, and I think that's interesting, too. So I don't know whether down the road we'll be taking advantage of those in any production way or not, but uh, something definitely we're keeping an eye on. <laughs>